So let me start by saying that there is no such thing as crony capitalism. There's no such thing as something capitalism. There's capitalism. And capitalism is about free markets. It's about the separation of state, of government, from economics, from any involvement in business and in the marketplace. And, and therefore, there's no something capitalism. There's capitalism. So yeah, there's cronyism. Crony socialism, maybe, or just let's just call it cronyism. Let's just call it this is government involvement in the economy. This is this is the the, the inevitable consequence of the mixed economy. So so let's talk about that. This is inevitable. You, you can't exist in this kind of economy in this kind of world without there being cronyism. The reason is that that's how we've set up our economic. That's the essence of a mixed economy. So what is a mixed economy? A mixed economy is this mixture of some freedom in some industries, in some realms, in some part of the business world, and lots and lots of controls, lots of regulations, lots of uh, redistribution of wealth, taxes, but, but not even just simple taxes, but complex taxes that incentivize some behavior and penalize other behavior, that try to engage in social policy or trade policy, or, or, or you know, or, or favoring manufacturing versus something else. So, um, this is government intervention in the economy. So when government intervenes in the economy, how does it do that? It does that through businesses. It does it through trying to manipulate businesses. So what are businesses supposed to do? They're supposed to say, oh, none of our business, government, do whatever you want. No, they, they are going to have to either fight back to try to protect themselves from it, or they are going to, because many of them don't know what capitalism is and don't know the virtues of capitalism and don't understand it, they, you know, in, in many ways, they're just like many, most Americans who vote for this stuff, right? They're going to try to manipulate those controls so that they minimize the hurt on them. And in the worst case scenarios, that they're going to manipulate it so that it hurts their competitors and benefits them. And you're seeing all those behaviors. You're seeing the behavior of just in self-defense. You're seeing the behavior of self-defense plus a little, you know, favoritism, and you're seeing the, the the behavior of penalized trying to trying to crush the other. And you see it in so many different ways. It's it's when I don't know steel companies lobby Congress to have high tariffs on steel so they can be protected from foreign competition. And and this is conservatives support this and liberals support this and you know the steel industry does this periodically. You see it when Netscape, right? can't compete against Microsoft on uh, internet browsers, and they go and run to the Justice Department to go after Microsoft. And it wasn't just Netscape, but they were joined by Sun, who was competing, Sun uh, Microsystems, which doesn't exist anymore really, and by Oracle, which I think bought Sun. By Oracle, Larry Ellison's company, the three companies went to the Justice Department to go after Microsoft. Now that, so here they were penalizing a competitor. Uh, y you see it when um, AMD and William Cargill lobby Congress heavily for corn subsidies because they own all the farms the way corn is grown. Uh, where sugar farmers in, you know, want high uh, tariffs on sugar so that they can sell sugar in the United States, keep prices of sugar high, because the fact is they can't compete with foreign raised sugar. And you see it everywhere in the economy. There's not a business. There's not a business, particularly a, a significantly sized business that is not affected in one way or another by significant government regulations and its industries or its own attempts to manipulate those regulations. And it's, again, it's inevitable. As soon as government steps in, business is going to respond. And, and you know, the best example here is Microsoft. Before the Justice Department went after Microsoft, Microsoft's attitude was, you know what? Government is not inter intervening that much in our business, so we're not going to try to lobby, not going to do anything. And they spent no money on lobbying in Congress. Nothing. Justice Bond goes after Microsoft, completely, in my view, unjustly, a, a complete waste of time, but a huge injustice because it, it consumed huge amount of resources from Microsoft, huge amount of time, huge amount of talent, and it crushed innovation at Microsoft. And Microsoft will be the first to admit that over the last 10 years, very little innovation because they've been under the, this this foot, you know, this fascist foot of 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 the of regulators from Washington D.C. Uh, you know, and it, so what was Microsoft supposed to do? Say, okay, do whatever you want to us? No, they now expended resources and now they lobby, and now they spend hundreds of millions of dollars and try to change regu uh, regulation and legislation to their benefit. 
And you know, once in a while, I read a story where Microsoft is saying, hey, go after those guys. They've got a monopoly. And that's awful and it's horrible. And they should be condemned for doing that. But should we then condemn Microsoft? That is, should we then say Microsoft's an evil company because they do that? You know, because Apple does it, Oracle does it, Sun does it, almost everybody does it. I think we should condemn the activity, but let's not ignore the context in which that activity happens. And let's also not ignore the incredible productivity, productiveness that these companies exhibit on the other hand. So yes, it's wrong for them to use government in order to manipulate the market. It's certainly wrong, evil, I would say, to use government in order to go after their competitors. They've been put in this situation because to a large extent their competitors are using against them. It's like, you know, uh, they, they feel like they have to do it because other people are doing it. Not an excuse. It's still bad. But let's not forget we live in a mixed economy. We live in an economy where this is standard practice. And let's not forget the genius, the productiveness, the innovation that these companies produce at the same time. Right? So yes, condemn them, the crony side of their business, but you got to still respect the, the amazing stuff that they do. Now, this is probably more true in banking than in any other field that we know of. And the reason is that banks are the most regulated industry in the United States. Now, does that mean that no rational person should ever go and become a banker? No, you know, this is just a matter of degree. If your passion is banking, if finance is something interesting to you, sure you're gonna go into banking and finance. I mean, you can't escape government regulation. This is the world we live in. This is why we need to fight against it. Uh, but if you go into banking and then therefore have to deal with five different banking regulators on a day-to-day -day basis and so on, this is, it's a major, it's a major bad influence. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a horrible thing. You're going to deal with them, uh, you know, and you're going you're gonna to sit on, on committees of bankers that are going to try and change legislation so that they don't come and kill you because that's what they're trying to do. At the end of the day, if you leave government alone, they will destroy this economy and they will destroy business in, this, in, in, in the United States. Uh, so you're trying to hold that off. You're trying to minimize the regulations. You're trying to shape regulations so they don't penalize you as much as they could. And of course, then you're accused of lobbying and you're accused of being a crony. That is self-defense. Now, what we need, what we need is for businessmen to rise up and say this stuff. So, you know, businesses are gonna lobby Congress. They have to, they have to survive. But if they lobbied Congress and said, we want to live in a world where we don't have to lobby Congress. If bankers, yeah, they're going to receive FDIC insurance. They're even going to be bailed out once in a while. It's part of the way our economy is structured. It's awful. Don't condemn them for that. Condemn them for that standing up and saying, we don't want it. We want a different rule game. We want freedom. We want capitalism. We want, you know, we want to get rid of all this. So, the day when businessmen stand up and say, we want freedom, we want less, we want regulation to be done away with, phased out, lower dramatically, we want, to, we want we significantly reduced taxes and without trying to manipulate our behavior. We want government out of our lives. We want, as, you know, we want to produce goods and we want, whether we succeed or fail, to be based on the products that we make and the services we provide to our customers. That's what should determine whether we're profitable or not that voluntary exchange, the day when businessmen rise up and declare that, that's when we will start seeing a shift in this country. But as long as they play this cronious game, as long as they apologize for their wealth, apologize for their profit, then it's hard to defend them, right? Because you're defending a very mixed animal. You're defending a very mixed, this mixture of, yeah, they're incredibly productive, and they're manipulating a system, a system that they shouldn't be. So it's hard. But I think it's a huge mistake. And, and you know, so Ayn Rand and Atlas shrugged. It's a huge mistake just to, to go after businessmen, just because they participate in the, in, the, in the mixed economy. They have no choice. And, you know, in Atlas shrugged, Ayn Rand paints a picture that is very sharp, right? You've got those who won't participate, you know, and, and Reardon is, it represents that. And remember, even he, signs the letter, is, is kind of forced into participating. And then you've got Owen Boyle, who's 100% cronyist. He doesn't produce anything. He's, he's of no value. 
the fact is that in the world we live in, most of these, most of the better businessmen are mixtures between the two. Or most businessmen generally are mixture between the two. They engage in government activity, they engage in cronyism, some. But they're, even in America today, they're not going to be successful unless they're also incredibly productive and know how to run a business. We are moving more and more towards an arm boil society. As government grows, as government intervenes more, as government regulates more, the arm boils are the ones who survive and thrive and are going to be successful. But let's not forget that we still have remnants of Reardon in many of our business leaders. We have uh, some of them are more, some of them are less. Let's celebrate that part of them. Let's celebrate productiveness. Let's celebrate profit. Let's celebrate innovation. Let's celebrate the great things that business provides all of us, that the businessmen shape. They shape our world. Nothing in our world around us does not, is not, does not come into being spontaneously. It's all a product of innovation, of creativity, of productiveness. And all of that happens in businesses, small, medium, and very, very large. All of those businesses, to the extent that they're productive, are good businesses. To the extent that they survive based on government favors, you know, uh, that's not good, and we need to criticize that. But let's keep context. Let's stay objective. And you know, many libertarians out there spend their time lamblasting business all the time because business is in the is in hand in hand with government, and they ignore. They ignore what businesses are actually producing. They ignore the effect, the, 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 the positive effect that business has on all of our lives, including big businesses, because I, I know there's this negative view of big business and the conservatives have and even libertarians have. Objectivists shouldn't get caught up in that. Ayn Rand celebrated business. Ayn Rand celebrated productiveness. And to the extent where we see productiveness, we should s support it and hail it and celebrate it. And we should condemn the cronyism for what it really is, government force. Government force is the essence of cronyism, and the fault for that is in the politicians and the ideology that drive them, the ideology that makes the mixed economy possible. That's where the focus of the criticism needs to be. Uh, it, 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 we're not going to get anywhere by condemning Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and, and, and business leaders uh, what we need to do is condemn the ideas and their manifestation in kind of the what in, in a, the mixed economy and how it manifests in a mixed economy.